Hey everybody, I am Mike Davis. I'm a chemistry professor. I teach at St. Petersburg College in Tarpon Springs, Florida. And I'm talking to you today because this is part of the Great American Teach-In. And this would normally be the day when uh, professionals like me would come to your classroom and show you all the great things about being a professional in some kind of field. Because you are a student and you are on your way to being some kind of professional in some kind of field, which is a great place be, right? It's a good part on a path. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about the sciences and what I do. So I teach chemistry, that is I have students who come in here for a college level class and they take chemistry from me. Why would they do that? Well it turns out that if you want to be a scientist of almost any kind, you're going to end up taking some chemistry. I teach four different courses. Uh, general chemistry, and there are two different kinds of that, so one and two and organic chemistry, again, one and two. Now, if you're going to be a doctor, pharmacist, definitely you're gonna take those four classes. If you're gonna be a chemistry major, you're gonna take those four classes. If you're gonna be an engineer of almost any kind, you're gonna take at least two of those classes. So generally speaking, if you go to college for something that involves any of the sciences, you will take at least one or two chemistry classes happens to be my favorite subject. It is so much my favorite subject that I do science demonstrations in it. That is, I go around and I blow things up and I make science seem like a really good idea. So I'll do some experiments like this. are really fun. So when I was in college in the early 90s, mid, mid 90s, in the mid 90s when I was in college, I joined a club and that club was called the American Chemical Society and they had this little program where we would go around and do science experiments for, um, I don't know, kids your age. And I liked that activity so much I made it a really big part of who I am. And so making sure that people understand and appreciate science is a big part of what I do probably the biggest and most important part of the job that I do and I take it very personally. So when COVID hit and we had to move inside and not see each other for a while, I made sure I did some science experiments at home. One of them was a little weird. Um, I have this camera that I'm filming this on. It allows me to do things in super slow motion. So you saw that in some of the previous videos. Uh, one of the things we tried was me getting hit in the face with water balloons. Would you like to see me getting a hit in the face with water balloons? And you want to see what happens when one of them doesn't break?
water balloon does not break when it hits my face. Kind of funny. Now, here's a really cool thing. Uh, you'll learn this when you learn chemistry, but this is the periodic table of the elements. And you've probably seen lots of different versions of this exact thing. Um, you might have seen a being made fun of, like the periodic table of Star Wars, or the periodic table of condiments, or things like that. They make all different kinds of things, but they all look about like this. What I like about the periodic table is that everything that makes up the universe, like all this stuff that comes together and all these neat combinations to make every little thing that you've ever seen is on this table. And it's for the entire universe. Now, most of it, most of the universe is made up of things that are, you know, kind of go up to around this element here, copper, okay? Um, going beyond that, everything gets to be around in much smaller amounts. But here's the thing. If you go to college, and there's a really good chance you will, because college is going to be one of the things that helps you become the thing you want to become, in my case a chemistry major, um, you're going to learn chemistry, you're going to do uh, some study with the periodic table. If you go to a college like St. Petersburg College, where I currently teach, it's a community college, we give college credit for general chemistry 1 and 2, which transfers to pretty much anywhere in the state. So if you take that class with me, or any of my colleagues that teach it, and they do a great job, um, you get that class very, very cheaply. You could go to Harvard, and you're gonna study the exact same periodic table. You'll be doing it at Harvard, and that's really cool, don't get me wrong, but my periodic table has as many elements on it as Harvard's does. And that's the same for any community college that you see in any part of the United States. And so part of my job that I'm doing right now through the government is to make sure that community colleges have all the resources that they need to, to offer the same high quality classes, teach the same elements from the same periodic table to anyone who needs it and make sure that they can do it so that people can afford it. When you go into college, you might take on, it's going to cost some money, so you might end up taking on a little bit of debt. If you can make that as small as possible, that's a really good thing. And so being able to take classes like that at community colleges where millions of students are doing exactly that. So it's a good advantage to get on. So please, just keep this in mind. The periodic table that you would learn here at St. Pete College is the same periodic table that you would see at Harvard. There's no difference. There's no extra elements there. So let's say you get a degree in something like chemistry. Okay, and there's lots of different degrees that you can get in chemistry. One of them will qualify you to work in a lab or a prep room. And lots of different labs, especially college labs, will have a room that looks like this. And in these rooms, we prepare all the solutions that students and faculty are going to need. And um, one of the things that you can do while you are still in college is you can work as a student in one of these labs. And honestly, it is one of the best things you can do. If you are taking chemistry classes, you're going to go through your labs, you're going to do stuff, you're going to learn things. But if you are working in the stock room, that is one of the best things you can do because you're actually doing the things you're learning in class for a job. You may make some money at it. You may, may be able to do something called work study, which allows you to pay for your college while you're in college, uh, another great thing. But um, working in the stock room is one of the places where you can learn a ton of chemistry in a very practical manner, and you can use that to make everyone else's labs better. And when it comes time for you to start looking for jobs, maybe in other stock rooms, maybe in other laboratories, uh, an experience like this. And it's really the experience that's really going to help out. So that is one of the things that you can do with a chemistry degree. Now, let's say the stock room isn't really for you. Making solutions all day, nah, it's not all that interesting. A lot of people might think that. So another thing that a lot of chemistry majors do, and you learn this as you go through the field, is instrumentation. That is, how do we actually get the numbers we need to know things about uh, solutions or solids or any of the things that we made or things we're trying to learn about. We use instruments, instrumentation. And so that can involve things like uh, balances like these. These are very expensive balances. One like this would have cost thousands of dollars because it will measure to four places past the decimal. Okay, one ten thousandth of a gram is what this can measure. So we take very good care of balances like that. We also have instruments that use light to figure out what's going on in a particular sample, right? And we'll shine light through it, and whatever happens to that light tells us about what's going on. 
And that reminds me of a couple really cool demonstrations that I like to do involving light. Okay, so let's look at what happens when we shoot a green laser through iodine gas. What do you think will happen when we shoot a green laser through iodine gas? Pause here and think. What should happen to a green laser through iodine gas? That was cool. Uh, let's do another one. What if I was to take a blue laser and shine it through three different liquids that have different things in them? How many different times can I make that laser change color? Here's another one. Can I make light without using a laser? You know, laser is a light source. Can I do it without a light source? Let's see if I can. Those are cool light-based experiments. I love doing them. My audiences love seeing them. So we're back here at the periodic table, and one of the things I want to talk to you about is, is passion, right? So you hopefully, when you go into college and you start to study something really intensely, you like it. And that's an important thing. You should like what you're studying. And so when you find that passion, make that part of your job. I was so fortunate to be around people who encourage that activity in me. So I want to encourage that activity in you. So as I said before, the periodic table, you know, it's something that we all see, we all appreciate. It's something that I love. People like rainbows and puppies and kittens and things. I love the periodic table the same way that people love rainbows and puppies and kittens and things. So one day I decided to make the world's biggest periodic table of the elements. And I did that in downtown Chicago. And that periodic table was eight stories tall and really, really wide. Let's take a look at it. That was the world's biggest periodic table of the elements, at least at that time. I think they've made bigger ones now, but I've, I've ignored those. So when I made that periodic table project, um, it was just an idea but I was able to give that idea to so many other people who thought it was a good idea. They formed a team, they worked with me on it, and uh, we were able to pull that off. And we pulled that off in a really neat way. So any one element on the periodic table, any of these elements, if someone wanted to sponsor that element, we asked them for some money. We said, okay, for $3,000, you can sponsor an element on the periodic table and we'll write in the local newspaper why, why that's such a big deal. Chicago had a really big local newspaper, and so lots of people would read the reason why, and that helped us sell a lot of these elements. It cost about $75,000 to put that periodic table up because we had to print out all those things. Each one of those elements, by the way, is eight feet wide, eight feet tall, because each of those windows was nine feet wide, nine feet tall. So it was kind of expensive, $75,000. I did not have that kind of money. I still don't have that kind of money. But um, with that sponsorship scheme, we were actually able to get enough interest and we sold over $100,000 worth of elements for the periodic table. That not only allowed us to complete the project, but with the extra money that we made, we were able to do science programming all throughout the city of Chicago. Chicago is an enormous city and not everybody that lives in that city gets the opportunity to go downtown. So that means that we could bring science activities to them. So. Here's where passion comes into it. I was passionate about the periodic table and sharing it with other people. The team that I brought on, they were passionate about sharing science across an entire city. And because we were able to work together and do the kind of work that we both loved, 
I was able to make the periodic table and raise a lot of money so that we could share science with people who would normally never get the chance to see it in their neighborhoods. And that is one of the things that I am most proud of in my time as being a chemist so far. So, you're on your path. You're in whatever grade you're in. And you are maybe interested in science. If you're interested in science, talk to your friends, talk to your parents, and talk to your teachers. Your parents and your teachers are going to be really helpful with this. And your friends too. Because if they like the same things that you like, you've got someone you can talk to about it. Right? So, talk to all these different people about the things you like. Right? And science is one of those things. When are you actually a scientist? Pause here and think about that. When can you actually say you're a scientist? Is it now? Is it after you go to college? Is it after you graduate college? Or is it when you get a job? I don't have an answer, but I can tell you what I think. I think you're a scientist whenever you say you are. So if you say, I'm a scientist, I'm going to believe you. And all that's going to tell me is that you are interested in science, you are interested in answering questions, and you are interested in doing it methodically. Okay? And the little bit of advice that I would want to give is, if you are interested in science, then you don't have to wait for permission. You don't have to wait for someone to tell you that you're a scientist. You behave like you are, you learn like you are, you act like you are. As far as I'm concerned, you are a scientist, and you should feel empowered to read books about the sciences. You should feel empowered to try experiments on things you want to learn about. And as long as you're doing it safely, and an adult knows what you're doing, you have a lot to learn, and you have a lot to tell the world. So, don't wait for someone to tell you you're a scientist, if you want to be one. You can be a scientist. And you can do it in any way that you want. You don't have to wait. It's been a lot of fun talking with you guys today. Um, remember, I am Mike Davis. I am a chemist. However, I'm a chemistry professor here at St. Pete College. It has been so much fun becoming a professor at St. Pete College. I really enjoy my work here. I want you guys to enjoy the things that you're studying. Your teachers are doing a great job helping you with that and helping you on your path. And if being in the sciences, if being in chemistry is something that you're interested in, and I hope you are, then uh, talk to them and they will help you. And you can be a scientist whenever you want.